guys uh, just can kind of sum up uh, what you did today, in particular, maybe the trades to uh, what precipitated the trade to, uh, to move up a couple spots to get Mims and then jump back into the third round to get Moss? Yeah, uh, Mike, you know, we just, um, you know, all week we kind of had some players that we had targeted. You know, if they fell close enough to us, we'd go get. And 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 that was the case with Mims and, and Sanders. And and we just, and, and I'm sorry, Mims and um, uh, Riley, Riley Moss. You know, we just didn't want to lose those players. And so... We didn't lose any picks this year. You know, we still we you know we still stayed with our five, and and we just felt they were you know really good value for where we took them, and, and that's why we moved up and got them. For both of you, it seemed as though position versatility was a theme with all three of your picks, and I'm wondering if that's by design or if it's especially important given your dearth of, of picks this season. I think I think I would say this. Um, one of the things we talk about. All during the process of the evaluation is, um, and, and it's with the scouts and then with the coaches. What's what's our vision? Um, and so, I think George and I both have a similar background relative to, and we want to grab, we want to draft the best football players, especially when there's a, a magnet that sits north of the others. And I say magnet, we're using video, but it's easier to. It, um, and so we said this in the pre-draft draft conference, when you're, when you're projecting all these mocks with two threes, there's so many variables and, and the spray gets wider the further you get into the draft. So here we are and, and we're getting closer and closer and we, reiter we re reiterate the vision. We, we hear the scout talk again, we hear the coach talk again, George and I look at each other and there's a clear vision for the receiver um, you know, his traits, he's got return skills, uh, uh, character, character, makeup, smart. Um, he's someone that can play at Z, can play at X. He, he brings an element of speed you can feel on tape. I think like that vision, uh, around the room was, there, there was no, um, there was no gray area relative to what we saw. Um, and I think the same, I think honestly, Sanders vision might be one in which varied around the league because he's a transfer from Alabama. He's, he's played some outside backer. He's played some inside linebacker. Uh, he had a ton of pressure production last year. Our vision for him is an inside linebacker, four core special teams player who can go and, you know, stem down to the outside. Um, we just, we saw so many good traits with him and such good production. Uh, that too was shared. But again, in the process, you kind of go through it and make sure, um, like George and I know exactly w what the vision is, but it's important to articulate it in the room. There's no surprises. And then um, obviously with the last player, um, there was a, a, cl a clear vision for him and its corner. Yeah, Sean, I want to say there, you coached against Jason Seahorn two years in Philly and then we were with him for four years. And so it is, I guess, a novelty or whatever it is, but to have a, a is the topic a, white corner yeah the topic's mm -hmm. white i mean you were around the last really great one so you jason were. uniquely it was different um jason played safety in college um and so that's an unusual conversion regardless <clears throat> of who you are where you're from he, he so he moved from safety to corner uh a, a fantastic athlete um closer to the receiver the better for him um we see uh, it, it's too easy or I don't want to use the word. It's too easy to just say, does he remind you of Jason? What I would say there's other corners we comp him to. Um, on the golf cart ride over here, I think if there was one player in this draft that I, I don't know how much film we've spent watching, but um, we picked and, and tugged and hosed down and looked at every tape and uh, visited with, he was in on the trip, all the numbers, prototype, uh, loved the makeup. Um, we, we spent as much time on this player because this, this was one of these players that we felt like in the very beginning was going to be one of these decisions, and, and sure enough, he was. Um, so, yeah, I was with Jason, but um, 
Holy cow. Um, he was married to Angie Harmon at the time, and there was a lot, a lot of things were different. <laughs> Chris, George, the, uh, um, the, Sean may have partially answered the question, but was it a difficult call to give up the third rounder next year to, to move up to get Moss? And, and is there is it a particular one of those? Because you have yours. And it's our second, year. third. Okay. And so we had two thirds. It made it a little easier. You know, we just felt this player, you know, like I said, he was one of those target players. We didn't have many picks. We, you know, this year we had, we had five, obviously. We wanted quality. And we feel like he's a quality player. And he's going to help us, and and so yeah, you don't like you know you don't you don't love giving picks up in the future, but we had two in the third, and so I think we all feel really good about it, you know, feel great about it for everything Sean said, and um, no, we had him in here on a visit, love the makeup, uh, he aced the off season, you know, the Senior Bowl, the Combine, then we brought him in on a visit, the coaches met with him, they zoomed, I mean, we spent a lot a lot of time with this player, and so we feel really good about the trade. I think one of the challenges for for a lot of people covering it because so there, there's a handful of value charts and um, when, when something like this is going on backwards or forwards, um, all of those things need to match. And so, um, you know, we started with team A, B, C, phone call, phone call, phone, and you know your, I mean, earlier is, is going to be higher. And so when you deal with future, it's a, it's a, it's, 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 uh, you know, this year's fours, next year's three. And so, um, the, the chart numbers relative to the trade were like dead on. And so, but that's hard for some, it's hard for anyone to keep track of something like that. And so the, the team you're talking with, uh, is looking at and communicating off the same chart. Now, early in the draft this year, there's a few that were like, whoa, you know, and we see those because we, we have all the, the the data that says, you know, who won the deal. And no one's when when you're when you're like an eighth of an inch with these bars, you're right, right where you should be. Um, so. I'd say 90 percent of the time that trade at that round for that pick next year is 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 it was that same value. And, and now it's our job to to win a bunch of games and 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 make sure it's deeper into the third round as opposed to earlier in the third round. Uh, for for either of you, you spoke at the league meeting about the ownership group's involvement in the free agency process. What was their involvement like during this process and then specifically tonight during the draft? Yeah, I mean, it was outstanding. They've been there, you know, for both days. You know, yesterday wasn't uh... – I mean, it's fun. It's always great to watch the draft, but when you're not picking, I mean, I didn't get one call yesterday. That was, you know, pretty lonely. But the owners were there. Uh, you know, um, Greg and Kerry were with us uh, the entire way. Very supportive. You know, with the trades, they were on board. Uh, we met with them early in the week. They kind of knew the plan. I would say the plan. You never. It's it's hard to plan when you just your first picks in the third round. But I I felt like the plan, you know, went as we as we expected. And so I think it was really good for them to see their first draft, be a part of it. It was funny. It was, uh, I think it was Wednesday, and um, we, we uh, come on, Mike. Um, we met with them and uh, and kind of told them what you know what, what to expect. You know, going to the draft, and and uh, and they were just okay. Well, what do we what, what do we do? Like, what do we, what do we do during the draft? And I said, well, you know, we just kind of we all just kind of sit there. You know, it's just like, but you know, that it. But anyway, long story short, it was outstanding. And they were part of the collaboration when we were trading and we were discussing the players and Greg had great questions. Kerry had great questions. So like free agency, you know, like ever, ever since they've arrived, it's been outstanding. Sorry about jumping in too early before, but uh, in terms of Mims as a punt returner, can you talk about his ability there and what sort of dimension that could add for you guys? Yeah, um, we felt like uh, we felt like there were Every year you look at the return game and you try to find who do, who do we feel is the best punt returner in college football? Um, and then who do we feel um, is the second best? And then where's the – so we felt like there were two elite punt returners. Um, that young man at Houston who got drafted really is uh, – Dell is, is someone that you saw it, and this was another. Um, and so – and then you keep 
you know, it didn't start returner. So the special teams coaches are looking at the return. The receiver coaches are looking at the, and then we're just bringing the scouts together. And do we have this guy ranked in the right area? What's the vision for the player? Captain, face of the program, makeup was fantastic, extremely intelligent. Um, you feel the top end speed. Uh, it was interesting. I don't want to say we felt the strength of the draft was in the second round. I, we felt the strength of the receiver position. There was, man, there was a group of six or seven of them. And in one week, it might be this order. The next week, the other order. And you, we kept, man, really working that, challenging that. And then um, the one thing that I think we found that was different, a lot of these receivers you felt were in rush hour traffic. Monday through Friday. And this was one that looked like he was driving on Saturday and Sunday. He was open and it was cleaner. And it, and that's because of his speed. And, and the others were fantastic players that were all drafted. I, I think within, a, you know, 20 picks either way. And so um, then then when you, when you continue to do your deep dive and you hear the makeup and then the punt return assessments come back, the vision, um, it, it was... I would say, uh, you know, that everyone says they're clean picks, but there were so many things that that um, he provides that we were, we were we were excited because you know that's one where you know at a school like Oklahoma, like it's not like this player might slide. Everyone knows who this player is, and everyone's going to value the same things. Everyone's looking for a punt returner, and then when you have a guy like. Caught week and then Mike Westoff, um, you know, we feel like he's one of the best return coaches that's that's ever coached in the NFL. And and so to have a prospect to come in and compete um, was exciting for us. So I think that was uh, that was the first. You know, I mean, look, today's the day where everyone says we got our guy, and it's hard to predict who our guy was going to be because of where we picked. But we felt real good about the guy we got. For both of you, uh, the Mims pick, should we take anything in that about Jerry Judy's fifth-year option? No, absolutely not. No. I mean, I think Mims is going to complement what we have. You know, it would be a great compliment. And, again, it's, it's he's going to compete, but it has nothing to do with uh, any of our receivers. Are you saying right now if you're going to pick up the fifth-year? You know, we haven't even – you know, we've just been focused on the draft. Last yeah. draft thing. Can, can you expound a little bit more on Sanders? And are you going to be a 3-4, do you think? Oh, listen, yeah, that's a great question. Fair enough, because we haven't talked about our, our, we see our schemes very similar to a year ago. Um, so inside linebacker, uh, if you want to be more specific, the um, the Mike linebacker uh, plays, generally speaking, to the tight end, the Mo. Um, structure wise, you'd, you'd see them both as inside linebackers. So we see him as an inside linebacker in, in the same scheme that we've been in. Um, and prototype in that role. I mean, obviously, uh, interestingly enough, when he was at Alabama, you know, he's had experience at both inside and out. Um, and then, then it, and then it's up to us to start doing some things. You know, we we have a tag called pressure player, and so to check it, you you've, you've got to be unique in, in regards to rushing the passer. Sometimes linebackers are pressure players. So in New Orleans, Demario Davis, we felt was a pressure player because when we when we blitzed him, a percentage of the time he he could affect the quarterback. We've had a lot of linebackers that, that were really good players that weren't pressure players. Um, that's not, you know, their first job description. I, I think this guy fits into that position where he's a pressure player. His his production on the quarterback this year would suggest that. Um, so we see the 3-4 fit. We see 3-4 inside. Um, I said earlier, uh, I don't know, but I wouldn't have been surprised if <clears throat> if a team played an under defense where they might have projected him as a Sam. But we have him inside uh, relative to our, our, our vision. Uh, yeah, w with Mims, obviously his production was higher, you know, this year just in terms of the, you know, the, the catches, the yards and everything like that. Did you see that as, as an area? Did he, was there a certain area he got a, a lot better? Was it a matter of opportunity? What did you see from his, his kind of last year there at Oklahoma? It was only, it was his third year. I think he just evolved. You know, I think that the, the players around him maybe were, you know, um, 
I just think he got better. You know, his routes were crisper. Um, um, they lost some receivers maybe, and, and maybe he was a focal point. Um, you know, I thought he was, you know, wasn't as productive two years ago, but we still liked him. He still saw the speed, you know, and the, the way he tracks the ball and the hands and, and the toughness, you know, in the run game for a guy who's not that big. And his transition after the catch on those, you know, the screens. And we just feel he's, a, you know, for his size, he's really tough. Um, and so we saw both years. But, yeah, you get better, you know, obviously in your third year. I think the, the interesting thing we both felt, and I, I wasn't involved in the draft last year. George was. But, um, man, the, the variety of playing time, schools they're at, um, this was a, a player who was here, entered the portal, went here. This was a three. It, um, ten years ago, it was you know, was he a red shirt or not? Um, our, you know, Mr. Benson, the late owner of the Saints, you know, let's stay away from the juniors, and obviously it, that's changed because a lot of juniors come out. But the the smorgasbord of um, ages and years played, and uh, you know, I've never heard of a. Uh, S six, you know, and then you're like six years, you know, holy cow, that's nice. And, and then, then there's someone who played three and then there, um, it was as wide as spread. And so, Hey, how much, how much can we watch of what we, what we can see that he does in a starting position? And, uh, the areas, the scouts were fantastic tonight because, um, we don't get to travel. And so they were, we count on them to take us somewhere and take us somewhere in a read, in a story. And the, the area scouts are the ones that know these players the best. And so then we cross over and we cross over and the coach looks at them. And, but the coach is in the office and a lot of, and, and tonight, um, and I made this comment to George right at the very end. I said, man, the scouts were fantastic because I felt like they took us somewhere in a vision. And, uh, and that's what we want to be. We want to be sold on something with passion and with each one of these three picks. And it, it was a, you know, it was a collective. It was different because it was new for all of us. New for George and I, both first first time together coaching staff. I've not worked with two thirds of that coaching staff. I'm looking around at the scouts. But when it came to these and we and we, you know, we're five picks away and we're verbalizing. What's the vision again? How do you and uh, they took us uh, in in. Almost, I mean, in in sync to to these picks in in a real positive way that um, was, was outstanding. Uh, as you guys look ahead to tomorrow, before the draft, you said you didn't want to trade up and get the toaster instead of getting the double oven, right? It seems like you got your your double ovens today. As you look, do you feel like you have what you need tomorrow to get a couple more, for lack of a better word, double ovens? I, I still think there's probably a good dishwasher out there. <laughs> no, listen, I think um, <laughs> I I used an analogy once to try to – the analogy was need um, and value. So when, when you clump these players and then there's, there's never any clear – there's a group of five that have equal grades and then there might be a group of three and then there might be ten – and so we, we both are, are, are value driven, like, man, the talent over. And so if that involved drafting a running back, when, when we feel like we're deep at a position or uh, then our mentors or how we've been trained have both believed in that. Um, and, and I think that um, now, if, if you can address a need and and you are getting the higher quality player, then that's this utopia you live in. It, it all falls to you. It's the highest graded player, and it's a position need, and, and you just that's harder to do. So um, what do we have tomorrow? Two sixes. Two sixes. So George is the saver. I try to spend, and uh, and we complement each other well. Two sixes, though, and, and look, um, I think – like we just finished looking at different. I mean, I, I think you, when you do the history of the, the NFL draft, and we haven't even talked about the minute the draft ends and that two and a half hour period where you don't know that you're going to be doing it, but you're going to find the last starting running back for this team that played in the Super Bowl in free agency. 
And there are a bunch of those players that are sitting out there. They don't know it yet. They're not going to be drafted. And so procuring um, more players and, and looking at each one with the lens of how can this guy, how can this guy do it? And, and, uh, and so that's still exciting. That, that's the part that you're like, you feel like that I, that I flip enough magnets and the, and the scouts have these guys stacked and there's a process. <laughs> so we're, um, we're still working. Sean, you just said that you're the you're the spender. George is. is I was the, teasing. Is, is the saver. Mickey uh, was the same way. I <laughs> listen. If, if it would have yeah. been up, to, we'd have been like in out of uh, out of everything in, in the first day. If it were me, so I told him I don't think. <laughs> I think I told the whole group this is probably the first time. The the other in the first three rounds we've traded up twice. It's, it's, but it was fun. We got players we wanted. It was but exciting. No, we were all. Fired I told you it'd up. be yeah, exciting. No, it's, it's good. You know. It's, Unfamiliar to me, um, but but I you know this this is this is important. So two picks at the top of the third. Forward targets, we talked about it. Um, neutral stay put. This is what's left back down. Like no different than game planning. Man, we're trying to make so many of these decisions um, Tuesday at 5.30, um, you know, eating some licorice and calmly watching it all and talking about it so that when the heat of the moment comes, like we've, we've been over it and we've been over it and we would constantly, George would say to me, all right, it's this and this. And then you want to, and you keep hearing the same answers. And then we'd want to <laughs> challenge ourselves with more film work. And so that, um, that exercise, I, I think, was really important and, and helped us all when here it came. You know, it's third and eight, and you already discussed the call Wednesday night for a half an hour. And, uh, and, and that's preparation. Even though you'd been over it, like you said, were there moments last night and early tonight where you're watching the board fall and thinking, maybe we move up and try to get in position before you actually did last that. night. Yeah. Last I, night was hard just because, you know, we had five picks and it, it's hard to move from the top of the third to the first round. Yeah. Yeah, we had we would have loved to, you know, there were some good players there, but um, I, I would say, you know, we moved up right to where we thought, you know, we didn't want to go crazy, you know, and there were still a bunch of good players on the board and, um, Shoot, we had a heart. I mean, there were still six players that we that we liked in that in that range. But these were, like I, I mentioned, the target players going into it. These were a few of our targets. Here's what you hoped for last night when you're picking with two picks in the third round. You're hoping the selections that are being taken are players that you have graded <clears throat> in the second and third round. And with every one of those selections, it pushes one more a player you have graded higher. It doesn't mean you're right or wrong, but we think we're right. And so we would celebrate the picks that we felt were reaches and then cringe sometimes when one of our favorites was taken. And we knew realistically that, look, there's a handful, but we would, what you're hoping for uh, in the early rounds, the more players that you had either off your board for a reason or two or downgraded for a reason or two medically character you're wanting to see those players taken which increases your odds of the players that you're looking for and so those were the cheers that you might have heard occasionally um and we're not going to tell you who we felt those players were for coach payton and uh, george it looked like there was possibly a trend with these guys. Mims, like you said, team captain. Sanders was coached by his dad growing up, a strict diet workout warrior. And you look at Moss, who's kind of been doubted, chip on his shoulder. Was that part of this as you build this culture that those traits too carried into what led you and influenced you to move toward them? Yeah, I mean, the makeup's been huge. You know, it's, it's um, you know, especially when Sean arrived, the makeup, you could see that in free agency. And I, I felt like these three players, uh, fit the makeup that we're, you know, that we're trying to create. They're all incredible makeup and, and you mentioned. And so, um, 
obviously it's, it's the player, this is everything you see on tape, and then you have the testing, and then the, all the other mental part of it. But you know, how how's the football character? You know, how's the off field character? That that is huge. And and you miss on players. You've know, been around this a long time. You know, most of the misses are due to the makeup. You know, injuries obviously, but makeup. And and Sean stressed that you know from the day he and I met. You know, makeup and and. Um, we feel like these all three players have great makeup. Yeah, it um, it'd be great if everyone was a captain. I, it's 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 when these things all come together, um, and and so we're we're grading the ability. And let's pretend we're in this third round, and this we like this player as a third round talent, but for some reason, uh, there's something that we're not comfortable with. We're we're going to grade them right there. And then there's going to be some um, note that when it comes to a potential back and forth, none of that happened tonight, but um, yeah. And so, and that's hard sometimes. It's hard for the area scout because they, they, they go to the school. There's someone at the school that they talk with and, you know, they all tend to their senior year, junior year. Um, so that involves a lot of research and involves a lot of time on tests. The one thing that's helped is the Zoom, you know, we get 30 visits, uh, so it's hard to do a draft with 30 visits. But, um, but man, to be able to look, look someone in the eye and have a conversation and um, all, all of that's part of it. Okay, the last one, Mark. Yes, sir. Uh, if I remember correctly, in the pre-draft presser, you said you had work, looked at like three players, total 1,200 snaps or something. With Mims or Moss, does it – one guy or another, does it take – 100 snaps to convince you on one and 400 snaps on another, or does it make any difference? I, I think, first off, in, in I'm going to give you the bad news first. Yeah. The, the, the night that we spoke about 900 players, we weren't <coughs> able to draft any one of those three players. But <laughs> All right. So, um, and I think that time – was really trying to separate, which we felt were like, there were so many, it was so, there were so many, like he, one did this, one did that, one did this, one did that. And yeah, um, the receiver stack was quite exhausting. I mean, I, I holy cow. We, we would do, um, there's, let's say six of them. We, we'd compare one versus six and then five versus four. And then we try to make an argument. We try to make an argument of, I'm, I'm like, I'm this kid's mother and I think he's better than Johnny at four. And then let's see why. And then pretty soon you, you, it stops here. We don't, we don't think he's better than three, two or one, but, and so we try to uh, then look at the special teams and then sophomore year. So um, the receiver, the receiver uh, process, especially in that second area that we were discussing, um, there was a lot of time on that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yep.